Okay, folks, ASA Remote Access VPN. Um, so we're going to go through a couple of things here. Uh, we're going to talk about dual authentication, Microsoft AD and certificates, certificate deployment. We're going to restrict uh, non-corporate, corporate, and iPhones. And we're going to also show the integration with Umbrella. So here we are. Um, so you could use the wizard to go through and do all the pre-configuration, um, all the you know the heavy lifting at the very beginning. Uh, I would encourage you to, to do that. Um, I've already got uh, some of the stuff already built out here, so I'm going to walk through it. So this is the connection profile, so everything to do with the connection. We're going to use uh, Microsoft and certificate base. So if you don't have an AD server configured, you can come in here and do that. Um, and you can see there's very specific stuff in here in regards to how to connect to AD and be able to, to leverage that information. Um, so all is good here. We'll say uh, cancel in my case because I already built this out. Um, we also uh, are going to deploy or give an IP address out to them based on this range here. We can very quickly configure. Um, you can see the group policy um, that uh, you could assign to that connection profile and group policies are, are configured there. But this would be part of the wizard itself when you're going through. Um, some specific connection details like DNS. We can go through here. We're going to enable simple uh, certificate enrollment protocols so we can get that certificate deployed. And you can see there's very specific information here um, that you could uh, modify as well as uh, group aliases and so on. So that's the uh, connection profile. Um, and if we jump here, this is the AnyConnect profile. So this is the specific settings that uh, you could push on the client when it ends up on the workstation or, or iPhone, etc. Um, now, these specific elements here um, are around the uh, enrollment process. So we've got uh, variables, percent username, percent, a couple other specifics that we want included in the certificate itself. If we look here, um, this is uh, the group policy itself, and we're walking our way uh, through here. Um, and there, again, some uh, very similar stuff, but things like um, uh, sp split tunneling could be configured here. Um, we can assign the client profile that we can, uh, configured earlier, as well as any of the modules that we want to deploy. In our case, we'd want to push out the umbrella uh, module itself. And in order to create the umbrella, what you do is grab the JSON file from Cisco Umbrella. Uh, so you log into the portal, you get your JSON file that's specific to your instance. Um, and this is where you'll upload it and uh, leverage it uh, here. Once you uh, have this configured, all you have to do is point uh, your group pol or, or this to the group policy so it gets pushed out. Uh, when the user connects and it's all automated uh, in regards to getting it installed on the end user machine. Um, here, these are the dynamic access policies. So this is um, elements that we're looking for specifically on an asset and then based on that, we're gonna give specific controls. Um, so in the first one, what we're gonna be looking for is iPhone, right? Um, or um, an Apple uh, device and we're gonna build an ACL specific to that um, device. So when they connect, we look for that uh, uh, Apple device um, and we're gonna control what they can and can't do. And, and in this case, they're very restricted in what they can do. So, um, and there's a bunch of other ACLs in here as well. We have a non-corporate and then corporate with some AD and, and integration as well. So here we're looking for a registry entry, uh, not VPN, or sorry, a domain that's not VPN.com. And if that's the case, we're gonna assume that it is a non-corporate asset. Um, and then in order to do that, we come in here and configure the um, scan image here as well as um, we add the registry entry. So you can come in here and, and you can do things like look for a file and have a, additional layers in there to have higher levels of confidence whether or not that asset is a corporate or non-corporate asset. Now here you can see we're looking for uh, the non uh uh, vpn.com uh, being in the domain field of the registry and then we're going to apply that policy 
um, in this case non-corporate ACL and you can see here there's some things that we can do but um, the idea again is to, to showcase that uh, dynamically will uh, assess the asset and then based on the outcomes of that assessment we will uh, or, or, uh, in, invoke uh, certain controls here you can see now we're we're looking we've added an LDAP at attribute of member of um, and you can see we can pull all the AD uh, groups here as well Perfect, and there's a couple other ones there as well, right? Sales, uh, HR, and uh, domain admin. So, um, and you can build these out as you see fit. Uh, the monitoring tab, we'll certainly come back and visit this a couple times throughout. But let's do a quick uh, connection through uh, an iPhone uh, itself. Um, so in this case, we're going to, you know, you put in your configuration. Um, you can see that it's automatic for certificate uh, lookup. And if we go in, we connect. It says untrusted server. That's fine in our case because that's uh, we don't have uh, signed certificate authority or we don't have uh, that CA in the root of this uh, asset. Um, and now we connect. Okay, we've got the username password in that passed. It gave us a message to let us know what our access is. Um, and then it says obtaining cert. It realizes that uh, the cert wasn't provisioned and needs to be provisioned and it's completed. So now we'll reconnect again. It'll prompt this time for that username and password. Um, and and that's it, right? We're, we're connected and, and then from there we have the ability to um, look at diagnostics and, and a couple of other things that are in that AnyConnect client. If we come back here very quickly, we can uh, refresh and we can see a little bit about what's taking place on the um, that connection itself. So we can see a little bit about um, you know the IP addressing, certificate and user password. There's insight into the OS. Um, uh, the ACL that's applied to it, um, all, all good stuff, right? Uh, it gives us a good high level view of, of uh, what is connected. Um, but we can also do that from the command line, right? So uh, very quickly, we'll just uh, reconnect here. Um, put in username password. Uh, I did not go through any debugging or, or really extensive troubleshooting by any means. Um, this is really showing you that it's fairly simple to get uh, you know dual authentication um, up and running uh, using uh, certificate based and uh, user uh, based uh, authentication mechanisms. So um, here we're looking at show VPN session uh, database uh, AnyConnect. You can see a little bit of information, more of the same of what you've seen before in the GUI. Um, and, and this time we've actually went into detail and, and obviously you can see there's a little bit more, but we can see things like group policy, the tunnel group, the encryption that's being used, um, the certificate and user password, uh, the public IP, the uh, assigned IP, um, the OS, right or the any connect uh, uh, the uh, the client OS as well as the client version uh, and the client type SSL VPN client for example uh, and if I if, uh, for some reason I thought I, I for, forgot to mention but uh, you can also see that uh, filter uh, ACL or that uh, ACL that's applied to the user here we have a corporate and uh, non-corporate asset. So the left side is the uh, corporate and the, uh, uh, the right side is the non-corporate. Um, again, we're going to leverage the uh, dynamic access policy based on a couple of conditions. You'll uh, get assigned that uh, specific um, policy and, and in our case, a restriction for network-based ACL. Um, and we're going to go through this side by side. So both images... Um, do not have an AnyConnect client installed at this point. It, it's actually very vanilla, um, and they don't have any certificate. So it's, what, what we're going to do is they're going to connect um, to the portal, um, the web portal itself, 
Um, and then um, obviously they'll go through authentication. It's going to realize uh, who they are, uh, and then it's going to push out that AnyConnect client and any uh, uh, specific information around the profile um, that we've deployed to that individual uh, will also be assigned. Um, and then it'll also deploy the umbrella client. We'll also then um, uh, have that cert provisioned, and then we'll go through a couple of test cases here. Um, so, and again, just to go back to that profile, um, I think I mentioned iPhone, but the profiles are very specific to uh, what's supported on an endpoint. So Windows has got fairly robust in, in regards to all the capabilities that it can do. Um, and uh, some of the other devices may not have that same level of uh, capability, right? Whether or not it's scanning a device or start before login. So again, you got to look at the version, the operating system, and the client itself. Um, so here we're going to go to uh, the uh, portal uh, and uh, pull down the uh, AnyConnect client. So. And again, this is all automated for the user. So I've taken the uh, the assumption that uh, both the corporate PC, uh, very clean and deployed to the user, does not have any connect as well as the uh, non-corporate. So, you know, potentially BYOB device, again, does not have the client. So it goes through, it gives you clear instructions of what you need to do here um, as, as a user. We go through, uh, it's doing its thing now, it's validated, and then the page will pop up and ask for the username and password. When that username and password comes up, uh, we'll obviously enter it, um, it, but we can select the group here. In this case, I just called it cert en enrollment uh, to make it easy so I know uh, specifically what that, uh, it, that, that group is uh, doing. Um, and again, uh, so on the left side, we logged in as admin. On the right side, we logged in as sales. Again, here's that prompt. Say yes. Install. Yes. Yes. And you can see the AnyConnect client now being downloaded. So this will take a few minutes, and remember, this is the first time um, uh, in install. After this, you would just use the AnyConnect client. We've got really cool features as well, like things like trusted network detection, um, where it knows when to connect automatically if it's off-prem, and when it's on-prem, it disconnects. It has the ability to start before login on Windows machines, for example, um, where you can create that VPN tunnel automatically or sorry, create that VPN tunnel before logging into Windows itself. Um, we've got auto reconnect. Um, so if you flipped SSIDs or if the upstream device fails or uh, there's some connectivity issues, it'll automatically reestablish the connection. Um, a couple other things that uh, we have as well is the ability to uh, push out that umbrella client. And that umbrella client is pretty smart. Um, it knows when it's on-prem and being protected by the umbrella instance within the the, the uh, environment, the headquarter, uh, head end office, uh, for example. Um, and when it's off-prem and not VPNed in, it knows to also enable um, it so you're protected, right? And we can also integrate things like Cisco Endpoint AMP. Um, as well as uh, IP fix or network visibility module for Stealth Watch um, that tells us a little bit about the asset um, and it provides NetFlow functionality or, or IP fix, right? That's the uh, open version of it. Um, back to Stealth Watch so we get additional analytics from it itself. Um, AnyConnect can also be used in wired and wireless environments for 802.1x. It's an advanced supplicant, so you can do things like cert and machine, um, uh, uh, machine cert or cert chaining is what we call it. Um, so you're validating both user and machine cert at the same time. So we've uh, we continue to move along here. Um, again, depending on the number of modules that you deploy, um, you know this can take a, a little bit more time, um, but. Uh, but it's not a lot of time uh, overall if you look at it. Um, and you can see automatically we've uh, authenticated, we're up and running, uh, we've hit that last policy that says you haven't uh, hit any of the other policy and that's because we don't have the certificate 
uh, yet. I prompt the user to put in their username. Um, you could do that automatically like we saw with the iPhone. Um, and now we uh, selected uh, admin and um, and that uh, certificate is being provisioned automatically, right? And that's done and it's going through um, the connection again and now I just have to put in the username and password and the certificate is automatic at this point. Um, and you could actually fill in the username if you chose to do that too out of what the, the certificate uh, was there. But in my case, um, uh, all you have to do is enter that username and password. You will not have to reference uh, the certificate again. And here we've done the, on the sales side, we did the same thing on the BYOD device. Um, and now we're connected. Um, the other thing to note here is that um, uh, I uh, wanted to showcase the split tunneling. So there's a couple other steps that we're going to do here. Um, one is that we're gonna show that I can split tunnel this connection and um, in our case we'll still be protected by umbrella just based on the way my lab environment is um, uh, but I also go through and I make a mistake on the um, assignment of that tunnel here we're just checking and I'll, I'll come back to that in a second but here we're just checking real quick okay we're we're admin we have full access can we get to the uh, server that's got a web page on it yes uh, so that's working as expected but when we try some of the websites we're gonna realize that we can't connect to them right uh, because we can't hairpin and we're not split tunneled so on the other side um, we're going to try to go to that same website and because the uh, non-corporate assets been restricted it can't get to that site um, but they can ping uh, that uh, that website and it happens to be the ad server and certificate authority and dns server as well right um, so let's give it a try and if uh, all is well we should get uh, a, a success here and we did so we've got the right policies in place. Everything looks good, um, but I come to realize that I can't get externally at this point. And uh, so the, in, in my case, uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna configure split tunneling. And um, so it, we go through this, I jump to the other side, we do some additional testing. Um, I come to realize very quickly, wait a minute, there's something not quite right here. Um, so let me just check the other side, um, just to validate. Come in here, let's just make that change now. So you can see here now this is where I, I I say exclude network list above which happens to be the inside network so I'm saying tunnel everything except the inside network um, so we're excluding it so it, it, it ends up uh, the 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 problem continues right um, so I, I go through here uh, I connect again I therefore realize when I tried to connect because at, at the beginning I did not realize that I actually um, selected the exclude um, and then uh, so I connect and I go wait a minute I still can't connect what did I do wrong here um, and then what I do is I look at the configuration on the AnyConnect client and very quickly I see that uh, highlighted as excluded and I jump back in and, 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 and make the appropriate change and then obviously have to reconnect again to validate. So again, we get the message saying what we can and can't do because I configured to, that to, 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 so in order when, especially when testing, it's nice to, to be reminded, especially when you have multiple policies, exactly what is the uh, access for the individual, especially when testing. So I, uh, I click uh, that uh, couple external networks and I realize, wait a minute, it's not working. Um, let me close it, maybe something's cached, I'm thinking, right? Um, let me just uh, do this BYOD device. So I open it back up. 
and I realize, wait a minute, now it's it's gotten actually a little bit worse, right? Because I can't t get to even the internet or um, uh, anything uh, for that matter for the most part. So I come in, I look at the AnyConnect client, um, and then uh, from there what I do is uh, I can very quickly see when I hit the VPN tab without going into too much uh, troubleshooting on the asset. Um, I see the exclude. So um, that's my key. That's all I needed to know. Um, and I'll jump back in and make that change. There's also other modules like um, the diagnostic and reporting tool. Um, and um, uh, you can push that down. So what happens is the end user could actually go through and run diagnostics and it zips it all up and sends it on its way. Now you can see I make that change. I apply it. We're going to um, tunnel uh, only the network that's inside. Everything else is going to go uh, through the split tunnel. Um, so we'll very quickly, we're going to reconnect here. Okay. Okay, username and password. Remember the cert is all transparent at this point because it's already deployed, but we're still doing dual authentication, right? Now you could have connect you could have create you could also create uh, multiple connection profiles. So you can say BYOD doesn't use uh, the corporate one and um, uh, they only use um, a different named one or you can do like I did is keep them uh, very much the same but then look for certain attributes um, on the asset so you can see everything look green on the AnyConnect client let's go to umbrella or open DNS we can see that everything's uh, looking good there so we know split tunneling is uh, working at least in my environment just the way it's built um, and then I do a, a check on the um, the BYOB or BYOD device as well And uh, so let's look at uh, some of the um, logging itself on the ASA. And again, I, I'm keeping this fairly simple. See that page came up, so that's all good. And you can see that we've got two users connected. Gives you a little bit of a summary. Um, but very quickly, I can look at specifics, right? Again, OS, we can see Windows, etc. cetera, right? Um, uh, the ACL that's applied to it. Um, you know, some good high level information enough for me to know whether or not the profile is correct. Um, the condition that's being applied is correct. I can also run to the command line. I can run debugs. Um, I can see the connection coming in in real time. Um, I'm not going to do that. Um, and, uh, and that's it, right? It's fairly simple. We're at what, 22 minutes.